you're listening to Petrified. This episode, the why will show the way. Kinsler to Don, to Garrity to McAuliffe, to O.D. No, wait, start again. Kinsler to Don, to Garrity to McAuliffe, to McMahon, to O.D. <laughs> why I don't put my keys in the little pocket. Days of my life wasted searching in this monster bag for keys. Oh. And I don't even need them. Crap. Jenny? This is impossible. This can't happen. Jenny? Ah! You big cow! Thank God it's you. I thought it was the landlord. I was coming home and saw his car turning the corner and ran in in a panic. You didn't close the door properly. Balls. Well, that would have scuppered my plans of nobody being home. Your chest is thumping. Feel. Catherine West. That is not fur, is it? Where do you get the money? The magical money tree. And you'd better start picking notes off the branches. I'm not getting the boot from these digs because you can't make the rent. Catherine, it's tough trying to find something that fits around college and study and pays well. I'm really struggling. Well, when you come down off your cross, you can use that for firewood, because the heating bill came yesterday. And I'm beginning to think by the look of plain terror on your face, we might be getting cut off. It's not my fault. Whose fault is it then? Charles Hawhey. The Taoiseach took the money for your rent? Yes. Kind of. Ugh. I'm going to my room to listen to my new tapes. More tapes? And don't disturb me. In your roasting hot room. It's always boiling in there. Not for long, apparently. I can't magic up a job during a recession, Catherine. I did. Get me a job in your place. Oh, no. 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 And no. Is that all you have to say? How about Kinsella? Huh? Kinsella, to Dunn, to Garrity, to McAuliffe. I hope all your tapes are rubbish. Hello, the Collins residence, Mrs. Collins speaking. Hi, ma'am. Oh, it's herself. Happy almost Christmas. We're weeks off. One week. Are you staying up in Dublin for it, sir? I could stay up here. Leaving you and Dad all alone in a peaceful house. Bored because you won't have to feed me or tidy up after me. Like, it's a possibility. But at what cost, as they say? Oh, If the call sounds different, it's because I popped out to the payphone across from the flat. The phone in the house is cut off, you see. I'm starting to see very clearly. I don't have that many coins, so I'll just dive right in. I need £50 to make up the rest of the rent and get stuff for college. You must have transferred to Clown College because your jokes are top-notch. Ma'am, please. I'm so broke. There are no jobs going up here. One word. England. Thatcher's worse than Hawhey. Don't you say anything about Hawhey. He's a fine man. Are you drunk? Because you're not. You're brilliant. Ma'am, it's a tough month. I can barely afford food. It doesn't help that I'm sharing a flat with King Midas, rubbing it in every chance she gets. Jenny. New clothes, always doing something, going somewhere. And she does so well in college. How? With her top secret job that she won't even put in a good word for me. Oh, speak of the devil. There she is at the top of the road. Jenny! In fur, no less. Fur! The head hair sprayed off her. Blood all down her front. Jenny! Oh my God. I have to go, ma'am. Here, sit down. My back. Slowly. What happened? I... I was hit by a car. A car? Didn't even stop. Broke the light. I went up on the bonnet and smacked down onto the road. This shouldn't have happened. Does my nose look broken? Is there a lump? Ow! Oh, 
That pain was my fingers, not my nose. By the state of it might say your fingers are definitely broken. Oh, oh no. No, 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 no. I'll call an ambulance. They can't be broken. They can't be broken. I won't be able to do my job. I won't be able to write. Can you, like, a one finger type with your left hand? It'll take longer, but... It has to be handwritten or else it doesn't count. I was just suggesting... I can't lose this job, Jenny. I actually can't. You don't realise how bad it would be. It would literally be hell. It would kill me. I could help. With your job. You. In my job. There's not a chance that... Jenny, we've never really been what you would call friends. Catherine, we don't like each other. Exactly. So, yes. Fine. Fine? Fine to help in your top secret job? You're my new assistant. You're hired. Are you serious? What's the pay? Oh God, name it. I don't care. Nothing is too much. Welcome. You are now an employee of Apollyon Ventures. I'd shake your hand, but my fingers are broken. Thank you. And if it's any consolation, I think your nose is just gushing rather than broken. Yay. Turn on the heating. I'm freezing. You'll be able to pay for it now. This place is kind of gross. It's different through that door into the main space. They want passers-by to think the building's derelict. So weird. Jenny, I can't stress this enough. Everything you see here stays here. You can't tell anyone what we do in Apollyon Ventures. Whatever you say, boss. It's weirdly hot. That's nothing to what it's like inside. Press the three and the five on that door pad at the same time, then the four. The level of security. What's behind the door? The Wonka factory? If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it... Oh, it's just tables with people writing. Now I know why you need your fingers. Come on. Hi there. No one will answer. You get in a zone when you're writing. You'll see. My God, I'm boiled alive. How are you still wearing that fur? You get used to it pretty quickly. After here, everywhere else feels cold. It's not that much cleaner, just brighter. Blindingly bright, actually. You need to see clearly what you're doing. Is it dirty? You know, I wouldn't notice. You just get in a zone. Everyone looks so stylish. You're going to start looking a lot better, too. Here, this is us, right at the end of the room. Table seven. Canteen is in there behind us. There's coffee, tea, a toaster. But you have to bring your own lunch. Jesus! What was that? What was what? Uh, the big colossal bang that rattled my fillings? Oh, you'll get used to it. You just... Get in the zone. Now, here on my... uh, our table are the essentials. Paper. You can choose from a torn page of a copybook, A4 printing paper, hotel stationery from a fake hotel, or this scented children's fancy paper. I like to flip between them. Next. Pencils or black and blue pens. A pencil pairer. Then envelopes. One size fits all. And books of stamps. You don't need to worry about running out. There are more every day when you arrive, ready and waiting. Like the elves and the shoemaker. That's it? I can't imagine this is going to be a very taxing job. That's where you're slightly wrong. Everything on the desk is what Apollyon Ventures provides. The rest requires some homework of your own. An address book? Mm Mm-hmm. What do you do? Write letters? Exactly. We handwrite letters. Really? That's it? About what? You're about to find out. I'm going to dictate and you're going to write. What type of paper would you like for your first go? Oh, um... The A4. Make it special. And I feel like I want to use a pencil. You feel that? That's a good sign. Now, this first one is an example, got it? They're not always exactly the same. 
Just the gist. The hook. The hook? Is this a... <coughs> this letter has been sent to you for good luck. The original was sent from Jerusalem. It has been around the world nine times. You will receive good luck within five days of receiving this letter if you send it back out to five people. This is no joke. It's a chain letter. This is what you do. If you send this letter on, good fortune, money and love will come your way. A man in Scotland sent it on and met his wife and won the lottery within five days. If you don't send this letter on, terrible misfortune is guaranteed. A woman in New York... Are you serious? This is your job? Right! A woman in New York failed to send the letter and her husband died, leaving her with bills she can't pay. A young man in Canada was killed in a house fire when he didn't believe the warning. Good luck or bad? You decide. Stop there. You're winding me up. I'm not. Now, this is very, very important. Treat this information as if your life depends on it. Everything I've dictated so far is interchangeable. You can come up with different hooks, different rewards, different stories about people, but this next bit, it never changes. Ever. It has to be word for word, okay? If you say so. Jenny, look at me. If you want to work here, take this seriously, okay? Okay. All your winnings are by the mercy of God. All your losses are on your own head. Stop. Now this next sentence. All the words have to be capitalized. Here we go. All benefits, all deficits, delivered or nullified. Stop. Next paragraph. Write as normal. Please send five copies of the letter. Please don't ignore. It works. Praise be to God. And there we go. Are you testing my handwriting speed? Or is this like hazing the newbie? Get up. Walk behind all six people at their tables. Look over their shoulders at what they're writing. You won't be bothering them. They're in the zone. We're all writing versions of the same thing. I genuinely don't understand what's going on. Are you ready for the next bit? The curiosity is the only thing keeping me in this chair. Fold the letter. Put it in an envelope. Put a stamp in the envelope. And now we put our homework to use. The address book. I, we, need to send this to people. We need exact addresses. Woe betide a return to sender if the address is wrong. Not so difficult. You'd think. When you do this eight hours a day, five days a week, it gets tough. An exact name and address, no errors, again and again, coming up with new ones. And you can't go house to house on the same street or else they talk to each other. Did you get a weird letter? And they don't bother forwarding it on. It has to be out of the blue. Unusual. Worrying. You don't want to hit up friends and family either. Because, well, you just don't. The phone book is ideal, you'd think. So many names and addresses. Except you're competing with those six on the other tables who do this all day too. And this has been going on for years. And you can't duplicate or people won't send it on. Oh, I got one of those last year and nothing happened. Into the bin it goes. How many of these do you write a day? As many as I possibly can. What happens if it's sent on? Put it this way. As homework, I took a two-week temp position in a travel agent's. And I got my hands on a folder of foreign addresses from customers in the US. All fresh. That did me for a month. I paid off my mother's mortgage. What? Do they pay you on commission for each letter? You don't get paid. Excuse me? I don't get paid for this. There's no day. So is this a hobby? How do you afford to live? Part-time jobs? No. This is enough. Okay, I'm lost. Did you listen to what I was saying when I dictated? Were you paying attention to what you were writing? Catherine, this is madness. Good things happen. When I send the letter to people, if they send it on, good things happen. 
Right. I'll see you back at the flat. Stop it! You can't go! I'm not sitting here writing chain letters. It's bonkers. You have to! Because if you don't, bad things will happen. To me. Like getting hit by a car. Just try it for today, please. You write them. I'll find the addresses. There was a belief that the very first chain letter was started by Jesus himself. It went that after he had ascended to heaven, he wrote a note sharing his teachings which made its way to earth to be hidden under a rock. It was found by a child and brought to the attention of town elders. At the end of the note was written, He that copieth this letter shall be blessed of me. He that does not shall be cursed. Copies of the letter dating back to the 1700s have been discovered. It was a hoax, of course. Had to have been. Right? There's evidence of the first money-based chain letter from the mid-1800s. Send money to the first name on this list and mail it forward to five more people and you'll get your money in due course. Or else. Most people think they're not real. How could forwarding a letter have any power? Jenny, I haven't worked what people would call a job in two years. My second day at Apollyon, I won a raffle that I didn't know I entered. 60 pounds. Nice money. Nothing huge, but incentive. And it just started rolling in. Little surprises, little treats. Twice the next week, I was the thousandth customer to walk into two different supermarkets. All my shopping free. Load up my trolley. Money has literally blown into my hands. It's not just money. I sleep so soundly. I feel good all of the time. My skin glows. I have my pick of the fellas. And if I get sick of them, I don't even have to worry about breaking up. They just <laughs> go away. If I tell a joke, people laugh. For a long time, the only downside has been that I'm always a little bit cold. Always. But the longer I've done it, I can feel it so clearly. You can tell when a letter has great legs. When it keeps getting sent on. The winds get bigger. The day is better. And then on the other side, you can tell when it's a dry patch. Put it that way. Catherine, the letters you are writing have nothing to do with anything. You just have good luck sometimes and bad luck other times. It's coincidence. You can be what you want. But if I pay you, you'll do it, right? Unlike me, you will be getting paid. And if you get lucky, that's just an added extra. It's a deal. Uh, did you actually put that heating on? It's a bit nippy. Oh, and so it begins. <laughs> Drink. Hello, the Collins residence, Mrs. Collins speaking. Hi, ma'am. It's your cross to bear here. Oh, I was thinking of you all day. Why? Did something bad happen? Stop now. You sound different. Clearer. Oh, Catherine got the phone in the flat reconnected. Why were you thinking of me? Your dad bought you a train ticket to come home for Christmas. He had a win on the docks. I know you wanted to spend it in Dublin partying it up, but... We can't be having that. You know this is your daughter, right? Of course I do. So this call was to tell me you're coming home for sure, right? Um, okay. Also, did I tell you I got a job? Ah, brilliant. I've been there a few days helping out Catherine. It's just temporary at the moment, it seems. But we'll see. Doing what? Oh, just admin, secretarial stuff. No, just about it. Beat's been found dead on a mattress under a bridge. Bleak, ma'am. What's the place called? Apollyon Ventures. They're small. You won't find them in the phone book. Apollyon? 
Christ, that's a weird name to call your business. Why? What would you call... What's that? What's what? A big insect thing just flew. <coughs> Jenny! What is it? Jenny! <gasps> oh my God, man, my, my heart. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was like a big cricket or something. The thing just landed on my leg. For, for a second, for a split second, I thought it had a human head. Jenny? Yes, I'm on the phone. Oh, sorry, there's a gift basket just got delivered for you. Thanks. My hand is really hurting. Could you cover for me today if I give you my address book? Done. Damn it. These addresses have all been used. You really left me in the lurch. Um, excuse me? Miss? Miss? You wouldn't have any spare addresses. Hello? Fine, don't answer. <gasps> what the hell is that? Does anyone know what that is? Anyone? What is that? The pipes! Is that... a door? Hey, scribblers! Is that a door? This indentation in the wall... It's kind of like the shape of a door. They... They look like the cricket things that were in my house. It's coming from the door! It's coming from the door! No one? Right, screw you all. I'm off. That's enough for today. My God, it's freezing. Please stop! Maybe I can just mail one on my way home. Does anyone have a spare address? Oh, it's unbearable! I need to go. I need to go! Oh, for God's sake. I'll just put down Mum and Dad's address. Marie and Jack Collins, six Windsmere Cottages. No, not Mum and Dad. I'll leave it for Catherine. in a t-shirt. <laughs> I'm lovely and warm. You sneaky bitch. That address book was useless. Your leg is bleeding. A bit of metal sticking out of the gate scraped me. Happens quick, doesn't it? What happens quick? The bad stuff. I don't start that rubbish. You're back early. I ran out of addresses. We'll get some for tomorrow. Catherine, I had a bit of an inkling on the walk home. How did you end up doing this? Have a guess. Do you want tea? Yeah, go on. It'll heat me up. I'm guessing, by that smug look on your face, the way you ended up doing this is the same way I ended up doing it. Kinda? James Marbury, the red-headed fella from college I was seeing years ago, asked me to give him a hand. Literally. Caught his writing hand in a mousetrap. Here. Thanks. Ugh. Awful cup. Oh, feck off. So are you under the illusion that you've lumped me with this writing? Eased you in. And you've done your first day alone. So now, I'm off the hook. If I believed any of this for a second, I'd say that's a pretty mean thing to do. I did say we'd never really been friends. Not disagreeing there. Well, I'm not going back. 
That's what you think. Even if I was foolish enough to, there's no way I could put up with that banging. It'd drive you batty. You get used to the odd one. Oh, this wasn't the odd one. It was non-stop. What? They need to get a plumber in to look at the pipes. Or whatever is acting up behind that door. You saw the door? Jenny, you you saw the door? Like an outline of one, almost like a door. Get up. You've got to go back. Nope. I'll give you addresses. Use your friends. Buzz off. Speaking of which, what is all that buzzing? People mustn't have been sending the letters on. We must have got a run of bad addresses. Was that a crash? Stop. You're hurting my arm. Let go of me. With your broken fingers. Oh, you rotten cow. Apollyon Ventures is short for Apollyon Ventures Out. Apollyon is the Greek for Abaddon. Cool story. Abaddon, all benefits, all deficits delivered or nullified. That's why those words are capitalised. I still don't get it. His name needs to be in the letter somehow. He needs to be praised. Right, will you do that? I'm heading down to my mum's for the Christmas. There won't be a Christmas. <gasps> I'm drenched. Now, you thought that was going to be scalding, didn't you? I put too much milk in it. Have to do it another way, so. Oh. Ow! Mad bitch! I ha- Catherine? Catherine! I'm beside you. You have me tied up. Well, I know that. And you lashed me out of it with a cup. You're a wiry feck. I didn't think I'd be able to take you conscious. I'm keeping you here till James Marbury comes over in his car. He'll help me drag you back to Apollyon. He came crawling back when he knew it was basically the end of the world. Two things. What the hell is going on? And throw a blanket over me. I'm shivering. Exactly. Hell is going on. Now that you're all trussed up, you have to listen. Hit me. Oh, wait. You already did. Hardy har. Are you religious? I'm going to say no. And I'm going to say you've never read Revelations. Amazing deduction. And I quote, A king, the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon. Where is this going? He's the destroyer, Jenny, the king of a plague of locusts with human faces and a tail with a scorpion sting. Oh. Locusts are kind of like big crickets, right? Some believe Abaddon is the Antichrist. Some believe he is the emissary of God's destruction. Some, like everyone who writes those letters all day, believe he is behind that door in the office. Are you saying that's what the banging was? The door is becoming visible. Are you high? Listen, Abaddon was tasked by God to collect the earth that was to be used in the creation of Adam. When he completed the task, he was appointed as a guardian. All the angels and demons feared his power. Abaddon was promised that all who venerated him, who praised him, could be saved. There are seven people in the office, representing every archangel. All they have to do is make sure he is kept in. The chain letters, every one of them praises him. It's a wave of constant praise, keeping him placid, keeping him happy. And when he's happy, those who praise him are treated. He's a needy bastard. And when he's not happy, he lets you know. He's angry, Jenny. Do you hear what's going on outside? That's happening everywhere around the world. And we need to fix it so the door doesn't open. Because... Because... Because if it does, Apollyon ventures out. He's the thing that brings about the last judgment. You're telling me that if the chain letters stop, it's the end of the world? The end of days. Catherine, I'm not going back. Right now, there are only six archangels in the office. You're the seventh. 
The chain letters need to keep going and they need to keep going now. There might still be time. The door wasn't completely visible, right? It was just an outline. But Catherine, even if I did go back now, the, the letters still need to be posted to people's houses and copied uh, uh, and posted to people's houses. Yeah, we'll have to cut out the middleman. You're going to write the letters, as many as you can, and then you, me and James Marbury are going to deliver them by hand. And then? And then we force people to copy them and we force them to deliver them to someone else and we force that person to deliver them to someone else until the door fades. How do we force them? With a weapon. Uh, Who do we pick? I already have a chain in mind. Kinsella to Dunn, to Geraghty to McAuliffe, to McMahon to O.D. Memorised as a last resort. All vulnerable people who live alone. If we threaten vulnerable people with a weapon, we can go to jail, Catherine. Is that worse than Armageddon? Look what's crawling on you, Jenny. So they are locusts, not crickets. Oh, oh wow. Can you see? The markings on their heads. They look like human faces. They look like my parents' faces. Imagine your mother and father screaming forever in the abyss. Please get them off me! You can choose not to believe me. But humour me. Come to Apollyon Ventures and write the letters. James and I will do the rest. Untie me. Please. Untie me and we'll see. There. So are you going to... You absolute lunatic. You need seeing to. Any. Please. I'm off. I'll be back with my parents to get my stuff. The Why Will Show the Way starred Rosanna Purcell as Jenny and Margaret McAuliffe as Catherine and Ma'am. It was written and directed by Peter Dunn and produced and edited by Liam Geraghty. You can keep updated with all things Petrified on Twitter and Instagram at petrified underscore pod. Petrified is funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee.